three worst mistakes that you can do in Zenos. Hey there, customer experience community. This is Dominic. Welcome to another video. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, Dominic, I am a customer experience enthusiast, Zenos consultant for a decade now. I have had over 300 projects and you're going to see some logos popping up right here. A ton of experience. Whatever I learn, I come here and I make these videos trying to give you value. So here are the three worst mistakes that you can make in Zenos. In this decade long experience, I have seen things being done by successful companies that I've noticed that make them successful. And I'm going to go through the things that some of the not so successful companies do. I know that you can make your own list uh, with the three worst mistakes. I will actually be very happy to hear what you think the three worst mistakes are. But until then, let's look at mine. Now, the first mistake that you can make in Zenith is not look for the resolution metrics. So the resolution metrics in Zenith, the two most important ones are first reply time and request or wait time. First reply time, as the name suggests, is the reply from which a ticket comes into the system until an agent gets back to the customer. Not an automized message, not a trick not an automation so it has to be a human who replies to this as you know as a human you like to be heard you like to be understood and you want to make sure that somebody takes accountability for the problem you're having with the product that you bought from whoever you're doing business with to this fact first reply time if you take too long to get back to your customers they will become frustrated and they will try to look for alternatives or they will try to send another ticket and this will lead to you know more backlog uh, which is detrimental to your business because it takes up more of your agent's time it takes up more of your company's time and money and uh, potentially a customer that goes somewhere else now first reply time is a best practice you have to keep it below two hours if you're offering support for email you have to keep it below two minutes if you're offering support for chat for phone do it for under a minute preferably 30 seconds now for the request to wait time so this is a little bit more down to how you do business and what your niche is if you are in in food and beverage, you need to be swifter with the resolution time, right? Because people's food is going to get cold. If you're in insurance, uh, you need to get back within, I don't know, a few days. So it depends on your niche. So what the resolution time is and your commitment to your customers. So use SLAs in Zendesk to make sure that you meet those uh, requests or wait times. Customers, as a general rule, don't like to wait and they shouldn't either because they bought your product, wanted something with good quality, and if they didn't get it, they want somebody to take accountability and solve that problem for them, right? So you take accountability, you tell them if it's something which takes a long time, you tell them it takes three days, it takes five days, and you fix it in, in two days uh, and you surprise them by doing it faster. This way, they'll be surprised pleasantly and they will do business with you in the future. Second worst mistake that you can make in Zendesk, overcomplicating the views. Now, as you know, from an admin's perspective, you have a limited number of views. You have 14 and as an agent, you have less. You have 12. So views or queues on the old folders where you see your, your tickets on the left hand side of the screen. And that's where you go about your day to solve requests. You don't have to have more than a few of them. The general tendency is to create a view for each process. Now imagine that you're just starting out with Zenesk and you have five processes. Woohoo, great. So that means five views for each process. And then maybe, I don't know, uh, for all unresolved tickets or uh, all unassigned tickets, that's seven. But as you're evolving, you start adding, I don't know, uh, 20 more processes. Uh, that makes you 25 or close to 30 views, which makes your agents have to resort to workarounds in order to see the tickets that they have to work. Now, what this means is it usually indicates that your agents are looking for workarounds and they're wasting a lot of time. What I've seen as a tendency, they stop using their views. So they just don't even know what to focus on or, and what they actually need to do in Zendesk. So as a result of this, the out Output that you start seeing as a business owner is uh, customers are coming back and saying, hey, I'm unhappy. Customer satisfaction starts dropping. So this is actually one of the reasons why you're trying to do too much with the views. Now you have two types of approaches here as a best practice. One approach is to create granular groups so or departments, right? So the more groups you create, the less views you need. Think about that. This is how it works. Less is more. And then if you have broader groups like customer service group and technical group, 
and that's it. You need to create more views. So the less groups you have, the more views you create. The more groups you have, the less views you have. So that means a bit of better internal planning and understanding exactly what processes you have through the business and how you can add agents in the different departments and you know mix and match them uh, together. An agent can be part of multiple groups. Don't overcomplicate the views. Try to keep everything simpler. Less is more. And now the third worst mistake you can do in Zendesk is to overcomplicate the setup. You might be in your role for a number of days, a number of weeks, and you're trying to do everything very good very well and um, and it's fun to start setting up Zendesk. However, it is very easy to clog the system with too much setup with too many business rules, too many tags, too many automations. I, I know, I know those are fun. That's the most fun thing about Zendesk. Damn business rules. That's the thing that actually uh, makes it fun. You have a business rule that you set up and you're very proud of it because it does something. However, if you don't keep in mind everybody else's experience, uh, you tend to create things which solve things now, but you don't oversee like how this will affect everyone's uh, chores in six months, a year, two years, or even five years years down the line. So that's why it's very good to be slow paced about this to not set up something that you don't understand fully. Think about if you're going to ever be moved up in your role and somebody else takes your place or you change your job for that matter, right? I'm talking to the head of customer service right now, head of customer success, head of customer experience. If you change your role, if you change your company you work for, somebody else will replace you and will come in and with the best of understanding of on their part of Zandas, they will start setting it up. And uh, that means that more business rules are going to be uh, set up, which is going to result in an overclogged system that nobody can use. As a general rule, keep it simple. Try to not set up something if you don't understand it. If your heart lets you, find a professional to come in and actually give you the right advice. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but you, if you spend a bit of money, you will save a lot of money in the end. What I've noticed in experience, in my experience, is that you set up the system as best as you understand it, and then agents can't see their tickets, everything is falling through the cracks and you don't have necessarily like a straightforward flow. This results in lost tickets. So what happens is customers become frustrated. And uh, not only that, but what you are trying to do is you're trying to fix the problem by hiring more people, which is good, right? You're being caring. You want to, you want your business to do well, but that not necessarily will solve the problem because more people doesn't necessarily mean that things will get up to speed and they will uh, magically disappear because your clog system will still make it for agents to not be able to do their job straightforward so they have to waste a lot of time finding different workarounds to solve a request and then it's to the detriment of your customer who is frustrated all right so that's my take on uh, the worst mistakes that you can make in Zendesk I'm curious what your thoughts are on the worst mistakes that you can make in Zendesk let me know in the comments love to hear that from you until next time I hope this brought you value subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one bye